Hey guys, welcome back to another week of What's for Dinner. My name is Andrea with Foodimentary Adventures in Food. In my household, there's me, my husband, and our adorable one-year-old little boy. Hey guys, so for dinner tonight, we are having Mexican quiche. And for this recipe, as well as all the other recipes in the series, I will make sure to link the recipe in the description box. So you are going to need a pound and a half of ground beef. You're going to need some Monterey Jack cheese, some diced green chilies, you're gonna season the meat however you'd like, but I am using onion powder, garlic powder, and salt. You're gonna need a couple of eggs, some flour, half and half, some onion, and a pie crust. So, let's get started. All right, so in my skillet, I have browned my ground beef with onions and the seasoning, and then to that, I'm going to add my diced green chilies. All right guys, so it's now time to assemble the quiche. So I've got my ground beef right here. Um, here I par-baked my pie shell for about 15 minutes um, on 350. And then I've got my Monterey Jack cheese ready to go. And now I'm going to um, mix up the custard mixture. So in my bowl, I have two eggs. To that, I'm going to add some flour and going to add my half and half. Okay, so I'm gonna layer in my quiche mixture. So I'm just gonna put half of the cheese on the bottom of the pie shell and then half of the meat. And then I'm gonna repeat the layers and end it with the custard mixture. And I am going to bake this for about 40, 45 minutes until, or until that custard is set. Okay, so here is the Mexican quiche. I ended up baking this for 42 minutes and then I let it just sit a little bit to cool down. And I cut a slice out so that you guys could see it. And you can see that the bottom crust got nice and flaky. And then here is a piece on the plate. And then with it, I am just serving some tortilla soup. I've had this mix in my pantry for a while and I wanted to use it. So it comes with two packs and you just add water and um, canned diced tomatoes. And then, so here it is in the bowl. On my bowl, I added some tortilla strips and some pepper jack cheese, it's on the bottom. And then this is Howard's bowl. He also has pepper jack cheese and he added a couple of slices of avocado. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, so for dinner today, I am making crock pot salsa chicken. So in my crock pot, I've got a little over a pound and a half of chicken breast. And then I am going to sprinkle the equivalent of a package of taco seasoning on top of that. And then I have a can of cream of chicken soup. And I'm just going to add this in. And it always sounds funny to me when it's coming out of the can. So add that in. And then I am going to add one cup of salsa. And I'm just going to stir this just a little bit, not much. And then I am going to cook this on low for about three or four hours until the chicken is fork tender and I can shred it. And then I will be back. Okay, so my chicken cooked for about four hours. I took it out of the crock pot and shredded it and I put it back. So next I'm going to add in this can of black beans. Now the recipe um, actually calls for you adding this to your plate after everything is out. That didn't make, that never made sense to me. So what I do is I drain the can of black beans and then I just add it to the crock pot. And of course, black beans are optional. Just add it in there. And then I have one cup of sour cream. 
and my sour cream has probably been sitting out for about an hour. I don't think you necessarily have to do that, but I found with dairy sometimes, when I add it to the crock pot, sometimes it curdles or just doesn't seem right. So I just let it kind of sit out for about an hour or so. And now I'm just gonna give this a stir, cover it up, and then continue to let this cook for about an hour. All right, so here is everything all plated up. I let everything simmer for about an hour on low, and I'm serving mine over some jasmine rice. This is such a quick and easy recipe. It's not the prettiest recipe, but it is absolutely delicious. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight, and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, today we are making easy spinach enchiladas. So in my blender here, I have one package of chopped spinach and it is completely thawed out and very well drained. And I'm also going to add in some green onions. I'm adding in a can of chopped green chilies. some cream of chicken soup, and some sour cream. And I'm just going to blend this up. Okay, so I've got that all blended up. I'm gonna set this to the side and get started on the enchiladas. All right guys, so now it is time to um, work on our tortillas. So I have some corn tortillas here that I did pan fry in a little bit of oil in order to make them more pliable and easy to fold up. I have some onions here. I'm using frozen onions because that's what I have. If you have fresh, that's great too. And then right here, I have a whole heaping bunch of Monterey Jack cheese. So it's kind of at your discretion. You're just going to take some onions however many onions you know you like. And then you're gonna add some Monterey Jack cheese. And then you're just gonna roll them up and you're going to put them in your pan seam side down. And by the way, my pan is oiled and my oven is preheated to 325 degrees. And I'll do another one, some onion, some Monterey Jack, and just gonna roll it up just like this and I'll work on the rest of these off camera. All right, so I've got all my enchiladas stuffed and I'm just gonna pour the spinach mixture all over. And then you're gonna top it with the rest of that Monterey Jack cheese. And you're just gonna bake this um, for about 30 minutes or until that cheese is nice and bubbly. Okay, so here are the spinach enchiladas. I ended up baking them for half an hour, and as you can see, the cheese started to get nice and golden brown. These are so good, so simple to make. Um, I am serving them with some charro beans, and these are from HEB, which is a grocery store that's here in Texas. So I've got some charro beans. I doctored them up with a little bit of um, seasoned salt. They don't really need much because they already have a lot of flavor to them. And then serving that with some white rice. And then my husband is having his with avocado. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight. And we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, so tonight I am making Southwestern meatloaf. So in my bowl, I have a pound and a half of lean ground beef. To that, I am going to add an egg. And I've got some salt and pepper. Of course, you can add whatever spices you'd like. I'm gonna add that in. I'm going to add a can of drained corn. I have some crushed tortilla chips. And last but not least, I'm going to add some salsa. Not all of it, I'm gonna save some of it for the topping. Okay, 
and you're just gonna get in there. I'm just breaking it up with my spoon a little bit, but then I'm gonna get in there with my hands and get everything all combined. All right guys, so I have my meatloaf all formed. I know that some people prefer their meatloaf in a loaf pan, but this is how I do mine. So I've got it all ready to go here. And then last thing I'm gonna do is just spread some salsa on top. And I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. And you're gonna let this cook for about an hour or until it is done but an hour usually does it for me. All right, so here we go. Okay guys, so here is the meatloaf. I ended up baking this for an hour and 15 minutes and it is so tender and flavorful. And I am serving some queso blanco macaroni and cheese with it and also some canned green beans that I doctored up with onions and bacon and some seasoned salt. So this is what we are having for dinner tonight and we'll see you guys next time.